Kate Kensington, Birmingham. So glad you guys are with us today. My name is Jackson. I work in student ministries here. Now, if you're a student or a parent out there watching, uh, please go check out our Instagram at kcstudents.bham to see what we're up to, what we're doing today and going forward. Uh, you can see it all there. Now, we are in our last week of our The Last Arrow series, and we also get to celebrate over 50 baptisms across our church. That is such a, an amazing, amazing thing to watch today. So uh, go get comfortable, grab some coffee, get back on the couch, and we'll see you guys back in a minute. It's Jen. So glad that you are joining us today. I just have a little something that I want to share with you from Romans 8, 17, and it says, And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share in his suffering. To me, that means that God is with us through every glory, through every battle in life. And in this first song that we're going to sing, it talks about who God says that we are, that we are his children, that we are precious to him. And so no matter where you're watching from today, do you go ahead and join with us in worship?
Good morning. On behalf of the whole Kensington community, I want to welcome you. We're so glad you've chosen to join us this morning, whether you're here in person or with us online. I'm Ryan Morrill, the Kensington Kids Director at the Orient Campus, and I want to invite you to two upcoming opportunities that I'm pretty excited about. The first is tonight, and no, it's not too late to join. We're hosting another free online faith and family event to encourage parents, specifically parents of boys. So join us at 8.30 p.m. tonight for Raising Godly Boys. I will be hosting a panel of experts that include author Mike McCormick and his wife, Christy, author and nurse practitioner, Dr. Jen Salerno, as well as Devanyu and Liz Banks. Devanyu serves on our elder board. Let's lean in together on how to help our boys grow into godly men of character, integrity, and confidence. Go to kensingtonchurch.org slash faith and family to register for this free event. The second is next weekend service. Football Sunday! At Kensington, the sports references come naturally. Maybe because there are a lot of diehard Lions fans out there. Raise your hands! Mm. Mm -mm. During the big game weekend, we pause from a typical series to celebrate amazing stories from different players in the NFL. Instead of doing our own teaching, we show an incredible high-impact video hosted by coach Tony Dungy and former NFL player Benjamin Watson. We will also hear from players from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Here's a little bit of what next weekend will look like. This is Sam Macho. This is Carson Wentz. Brandon Cooks. And I'm excited to share my story. Share my story during Football Sunday. Football Sunday 2021. This year has been unlike any other year for all of us. For all of us. But in the middle of the uncertainty, there's a unique opportunity for us all to experience the faithfulness of God. Because when the ground is shifting and the world is rumbling, God is always inviting us into something that cannot and will not ever be moved. Football Sunday 2021. Release hope. Unlock potential. Be unshaken. This is the perfect service to invite someone to, especially that sports fan who has been a little reluctant about church. Okay. So let's head back to our service now. We're in the fifth and final week of The Last Arrow. It's been a really powerful series to focus on as we start the new year. I've been mulling over this idea that we can save, hoard, hide, or we can give all that we have and live every second. Let's live that way, shall we? Today's service is titled The Release. So let's discover together what that means for our lives. Thank you for joining us. Hey, welcome Kensington, Birmingham. It has been an incredible journey together through this series. I'm so thankful for what we have coming up, some of the opportunities, not only to partner with families, but also next week for Football Sunday. It's going to be an incredible time where we hear some of those stories and get those glimpses behind the scenes that have an impact on not only people, but give us a perspective that might shift a little bit of our idea of, of this time right now that we are in. Now, we've been in this series called The Last Arrow, and it's been this incredible journey of of a story of what God has been doing, not only in the middle of a pandemic and a difficult season, but in the middle of barriers that we continually face. It's been opening our mindset to what God could do in our lives and through our lives. And, and this journey through this series is sort of based on a book by Erwin McManus, an incredible teacher that I have I've learned his writings and grown is, is all of it, the different teachings he has has been absolutely stunning of what this book kind of offers us as a perspective, a mindset shift about how God can, can give us a vision for our lives. Now, the idea of this last arrow, whether or not you're a hunter or not, we kind of talked about this early on, is that the last arrow mindset is that if you were a hunter or if you were going out into the woods and you only had one arrow instead of an entire quiver full, how would you live? How would you make choices? What decisions would you make? What risk would you take? And, and for us, if we realize that our lives are like this last arrow, and there is an intentionality in which we can walk into our days and the impact, the vision, the mindset that we can have, it would entirely change our perspective. So we've been going on this journey through the last four weeks and this week being the fifth. The first week was this idea that we save nothing for the next life, that, that the idea is that we would build bigger hearts rather than bigger barns. And then we talked about finding our people, that when we reshape the circles in our lives, it, God begins to reshape us and there's an impact that happens. Then we talked about choosing the future where we would step away from maybe past shame or past success and continue to choose a future of faithfulness and following Jesus wherever he is directing us. And we wrestle with the tension of, is he worth following? 
And I know for some of us, that's a question that we are living in. And I, I'm so thankful you are with us kind of wrestling with that question. Cause every time we step into his story, we start learning a little bit more about him. And then last week, Cliff led us through this idea of being battle ready instead of waiting for whatever moment we hope happens that we would spend our time preparing for it so that we can walk with confidence into those moments. This is the idea of the last arrow. And today we're talking about the release. That's what we called this week. It's the release. It's that moment, that tension moment where we let go of the arrow and we begin to see it take flight. And I believe that today is one of the most powerful perspectives that we can, can start to, to wrestle with. Because when we lean into this idea that in this last arrow, the moment we release, we are releasing our lives towards a target. And we're going to kind of wrestle with what that target is. But before we do that, why don't you join me in a quick prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for your love and your grace that as we wrestle with these ideas and, and we consider what it means to be intentional in our lives and we come face to face with barriers that you continue to walk alongside us, to encourage us, to offer us hope and a future. So we, we submit today and just say, this is yours. Lead us. Lead our hearts in Jesus name. Amen. So I, I don't know about you, but we're in January. So the question always when it, January happens is like, am I, do I have a goal for this year? Do I have something I'm focusing on? Maybe you have a goal of reducing your debt. Maybe you have a goal, a health goal uh, of losing weight or eating healthier, getting more sleep. Or maybe you have a goal of, um, of running a marathon. I don't, I don't know what your goal is, but you know, when you have a goal, you start to focus in on it. I remember one summer, uh, my soccer coach told me that I had to, to come back in the fall along with our whole team and try to hit the goal of what we call a Cooper's test, which means you'd run 12 minutes and two miles in 12 minutes. And, and here's the thing, I, I, I'd watched people do it, but I'd never done it. And honestly, I don't know if at that time I could even run a six minute mile, let alone two of them back to back. So I started training, I started focusing in on this goal, but then I started to drift because I, I didn't know if I could push myself to that level. And I remember one time in class, uh, as the school year was beginning and we were about to get started on this Cooper's test, I was in class with a friend and, and my friend was one of our faster guys in our school and he was about six inches taller than me, so he had a longer stride and, and we were about to do kind of a, a, a beginning of the year test to see what we could do with a mile. And as I began to do this, this mile, what ended up happening is I, I decided at the very beginning, I was going to focus in on his step and I was going to follow him step for step, step for step. And when I would follow him step for step, I believe that maybe I would be faster than I thought. And so as I started following step for step and actually he would take one step, I'd take two, but I was following step for step. All of a sudden I started realizing is that we got to the end and the, the final sound of our teacher calling out times, five minutes, 40 seconds. And I was like, this is never, this has never happened. And by the way, it has never happened ever since that moment. But it was because there was something about focusing on this person's step that kind of led me forward. And it almost gave me the freedom, the, the focus to, to achieve the goal that was right in front of me. And I don't know about you, but when we think about that goal or the target that we have, I would love to say I've brought that mindset into every single area of my life, but I haven't. I drift. I'm sure you drift. You kind of get tired. You get uh, distracted. Things happen. Life hits you and, you and you don't know how to step into those moments and you come up against barrier and barrier. But the question that we have to wrestle with, that we have to take a step back and ask is what are we aiming at? What are we aiming at? When you think about your life, when you think about the impact you want to have, when you think about your children and who you want them to become, what is the goal? What is the target? Is it just that they follow all the rules? Is it just that they check the box? Is it just that I, I get through my day and I survive? Is it just acquiring more comfort? What am I aiming at? Or is there something inside of us as we lean into this idea of the last arrow of being released with purpose and intentionality? That there's something that stirs deep within us that says, maybe God is inviting me to aim at something more significant, more profound, more impactful. So I, see, for me, I often notice that even though I have that aim or desire, I can often settle accidentally for less. I mean, even as a young dad, 
So we have four children. It's absolute chaos all the time, loud, uh, never a quiet moment in our house. But when we had our first daughter, I remember that moment so clearly. I, was, I had this vision, this aiming idea that I was aiming to become an engaged father. I wanted to be a dad that was on the ground, right? I want to be a dad who would get, in, get into the mix of it with my kids. I wanted to wrestle. I wanted to, to be a dad who would mess up my house for the fun and joy of building a fort. But have you ever had a goal that you notice you started settling on? I, I thought maybe I'd settle when I got tired. Well, I was tired all the time. I thought maybe I'd, I'd settle, but I'd had the energy to come back and continue to keep focused. But I remember there was this one moment about four months in uh, to, to Serena being with us. And Jenny was upstairs with Serena giving her a bath like she did all the time. And, and I remember I was just sitting on my couch, scrolling through my phone, maybe watching a, t- a TV show, kind of having this thought of, I deserve, I deserve to be comfortable right now. I deserve... I deserve to relax again. I deserve, and all of a sudden, this idea of what I deserve, this comfort, and what I desire to consume, and all the things me, 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 started realizing that I was missing out on the very thing I was aiming for, that I needed to shift from this consumeristic mindset, but to how am I co- contributing in this family? How am I living out this, this idea, this goal, this, this concept of being this engaging father? And I, and I had this moment where I felt like there's this gut feeling and a, Jesus may be speaking into me, challenging me, going, get upstairs right now and be a part of this moment with your family. And I remember running upstairs and realizing that it had been months since I had been a part of a moment like that with my kid and my my wife. And I realized, wow, how quickly, even though I had this goal and desire to become this engaging father, I started to get distracted along the way. So what happens is sometimes we need these reminders. We need these reminders that shift our mindset, that give us a glimpse into something more significant. And so we had this opportunity last week to begin uh, to celebrate baptisms with people. And baptism, I don't know if you, you know what baptism is, but just kind of quick overview. Baptism is what we call an outward expression of an inward reality. It's this moment where people, and it's been this tradition for thousands of years, where people would, be, would go down into the water, signif- uh, signifying that their old life, their old ways, their, the way that they decided their life and aimed for life are no longer the, the version of life that they're called to. But they're choosing in, in that moment to go under the water and say, I'm going to surrender my life to Jesus. I'm going to follow his ways. And when they come out of it, this idea that they are a new person. It comes from the scripture out of 2 Corinthians said the old is gone and the new has come. So that idea, this outward expression of going down into the water and coming out of the water is this outward expression of an inward reality and decision that individuals make. And it's this beautiful moment. For me, this last week, we, we had the chance to celebrate these stories across all of Kensington, where we got to see stories of families, individuals, children, teenagers, adults, people who, there was this one guy who, who, who made a decision. It was this moment it, later in his life where he wasn't even able to get down into the water, but just wanted cups of water dropped on his head because that's what he physically could do in that moment. It's a beautiful moment. Every time I see a moment like this, I'm reminded that this powerful practice that we got to celebrate together in the middle of a pandemic, by the way, in the middle of barriers everywhere. In this moment, we got to celebrate what God is doing in people's lives and in their hearts. And we're following something that Jesus shared and gave a vision to said, maybe this is worth aiming our life at. And here's what we see in Matthew 28. And I want to step into this. And read this. And Jesus came and said to them, he's with his disciples. It's kind of this last moment, these last words with the disciples. All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of of the age. There's something so powerful about Jesus kind of illuminating this vision for life. See, these are some of his final words. And so you would know there is a moment after he has died and he has been resurrected. So these disciples have seen Jesus sacrifice his life, which is what the surrendering moment is like, Jesus, you have sacrificed your life. And so I want to follow you. That's what baptism, that outward expression of an inward reality is. And and so these disciples are hearing these words and Jesus says, here's the vision I want you to aim for in your life, a life 
that has a target. And the target is sharing what I have given you, what I have taught you, what you have experienced in my life. I want you to share with the world. It's beautiful. It's a type of life that's not about consuming, but it's about contributing and impacting and having this life of significance to live life with this last arrow intentionality. And isn't that what we naturally do as humans, as friends, as individuals? Like we walk through life. Maybe you've learned how to, how to navigate finances. Maybe you've learned how to, how to work on a car. Maybe you've learned how to parent a little bit. And so what do you do when other people have questions and struggles? You offer the very wisdom that you have, the very wisdom maybe that you failed and learned from. And God begins to use those moments in our lives and in our community. And collectively, we learn from one another. We grow together. We experience more moments of significance and stories. I mean, I know this for my family. We have four kids. Jenny and I are, are looking forward to all the people that at some point along their lives walk beside them and teach something that they don't want to hear from me. We call that a third party person that they would walk with our children and teach them something that even though I've said it, they don't want to hear it. Right. And you know, you and I know that this is our hope as a community. But there's something so powerful about what Jesus is doing in this moment. At the end of this time on the, in the world, he is releasing. This is the idea of today. He is releasing these disciples, these people who have experienced his peace, his hope, his love, his grace. He's saying, now bring that into the world so other people can experience what you have experienced. And yet in this moment, something also so catalytic happens. Jesus anchors this idea, this vision in his own story. See, if you've ever studied the life of Jesus and how his life, the the humanity and love and grace that he displayed to individuals, how he walked with people, walked with the marginalized, valued people that other people said weren't valuable, stepped into a moment of hurt and didn't offer shame, but brought hope and healing. Jesus over and over again would model to his disciples what he would eventually ask them to do. And this moment is no different. See what happens. This is the very last. These are the very last words in the book of Matthew. But at the beginning of Matthew, when we begin to see Jesus's life and narrative unfold, when he steps into this world, we hear a little bit of his genealogy and, and his story and his background as a baby and him being born, which we celebrate at Christmas. But then it, there's a, there's a gap and the gap picks up at this very next moment that we're going to read, which is where Jesus anchors this story. He said, I'm sending you out, but he's anchoring them to this moment. I want you to see this. The first moment we see Jesus interacting as an adult in this world. It says, then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Like John, the, he's named John the Baptist saying, like you're coming to me for me to baptize you. I'm not even worthy. I should be baptized by you. But Jesus answered him, let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. What Jesus does in this moment when he anchors the story of what he's sending and and telling these disciples to to go do and be in this world Jesus is releasing his disciples to follow his lead he's anchoring our story in his own life and he says follow my lead to you and me he's saying follow my lead of where I'm taking you the vision I'm giving for your life the way that I've modeled my love and my grace in this world and he's, and he's over and over again inviting him. And one of those ways we do that is what we're celebrating today. This idea of baptism, outward expression of an inward reality. But what we have to realize, what is so beautiful about this story, what is so beautiful about Jesus is baptism isn't the target. It is the release. It is the moment we let go and we are released towards the target of life. It is the beginning of what is to come. It is the anchor moment. It is part of our discovery process of what God wants to do in our hearts, how he wants to speak to our souls, how he wants to speak to our fears, how he wants to speak to the areas where maybe we've compartmentalized and we've kind of held back. And it's a moment where he wants to invite us 
into discovering more of the life that he has for us. This is why I love reading the narratives of Jesus' life. They anchor me in what matters. They anchor me when so often I desire to almost drift towards comfort. They brings me back and says, this is what a meaningful life is about. And while a comfortable life may feel good, there is something more significant to aim for. A risk, a step of faith, the moment of a release into the world to bring hope, to bring joy, to bring peace along with us because we have learned those things along the way. See, it's what I find myself always coming back to in this idea of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, where Jesus is speaking. Jesus actually gave us a vision of the target. So what are we aiming for? This is what Jesus kind of shares when he says, how do we pray? This is what he says. Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Maybe you've heard this before. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be not your name. It's this idea of worthy is your name. You, you deserve worship, God. You deserve so much more glory. You deserve, there's something so powerful about you. And he says this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is heaven. Now, I know many of us, if you, if you grew up in a faith tradition and it, it, as a child, you may have recited this over and over again and you could walk totally through it. But I'm just going to pause us right there. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the vision. This is what God is saying we are aiming for. When Jesus is releasing his disciples into the world, he's releasing them towards this vision. Your kingdom, God, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Today is not just about baptism. It is a celebration of what God has been doing in people's lives. Over 40 people being released into the world to be on mission with God, to, to teach others what they have learned. But it's also a celebration of all those people who have been praying for these individuals, walking with these individuals, mentoring these individuals, and the impact of the community having together. See, today is not just about celebrating one story. It's celebrating the stories that are interwoven together. This vision that we are all released to have a life of significance, to have an impact in every single sphere of influence. There are stories today about friends. There are stories today about family. There are stories today about mentors. There there are stories today about redemption and every single one of them are under this mindset of where God has anchored our hearts in his hope. Today is not just about baptism, but it's about the kingdom of God coming into this world. And it is this reminder that while we are released to bring hope, it's not just for hope's sake. We are released to bring hope because the hope of the kingdom of God we are released to bring hope because we are clinging to this idea that the kingdom of heaven is coming to this world through people and for people. And this is what we are aiming for. So what is it? What is the target? The target is that we are being released to bring hope into this world, to bring the kingdom of God that we have experienced and giving others a glimpse and taste of it as well. You are being released. Now, for some of you, I know this because all of us are in different places on this journey. Some of you are wondering, is God worthy of that in my life? Like, should I follow him like that? Should I lean into his voice like that? Does he actually love me? Do I deserve to be released for something so powerful and significant? Because I'm afraid. I'm fearful. I'm unsure. And what I would say to you is God is inviting you through his story over and over again, where he anchors this hope in his own story. He offers that to you and to me. For some, you're asking, well, where, God, where are you releasing me to bring the kingdom? In every single sphere of influence, in every single relationship, but it's more about what we're bringing. We bring a kingdom that modeled grace, that models forgiveness, that models humility, that models love, that models listening and learning and growing together, that models serving one another and serving the world around us. We, we, we model a kingdom that brings healing to the hurting and hope for the desperate. Like this is, this is what we pray when we say your kingdom come and we're saying, give us our daily bread. We're asking God, will you lead us to bring your kingdom to this world? See, I believe that Jesus, 
Every single time that we step into that prayer, almost with a desperation, he's telling us to bring hope because hope feels like home, doesn't it? Doesn't hope feel like home when you experience somebody who has hope in the midst of difficult circumstances? There's something that sits so deep in our souls like that, that feels right. And I don't even know why, because it feels like hope. And the disciples are called to bring that type of hope into the world. Bring hope to the hurting, bring hope to the frustrated, bring hope to the fearful, the marginalized, and those that don't have a vision. Bring hope to all of God's children. Bring hope and access because that hope that feels like home is anchored in Jesus, in his life, his death, his resurrection, and the way that he modeled it. Because when we do, when we bring that type of hope, we get a glimpse of God's goodness and his grace intersecting our world. We get a, a picture of what his kingdom come truly looks like. What anchors me, one of the things that I, as I was thinking about this, I wrote, God sent his son from the comforts of heaven for the hearts of humanity to offer hope. Think about that. God sent his son because he said, you and me, we're so valuable. He loves us so much that he would leave the comfort of heaven for the hearts of humanity to offer us hope, healing, restoration. So this is why I'm being, releasing you back into the world. You are being released because this is the type of life that you are being offered. And I know if you ever, if you ever shot a bow before, a compound bow specifically, and you were to pull that bow back, something happens, right? I don't know if, this, if, this, if you've ever done this, but the first time I was taken out to do this with, with my buddy DC, he had me pull that bow back. And what happens is if you keep that bow, that last arrow kind of tight in the tension of what is going on, and you don't release the arrow towards the target that you're aiming at, what begins to happen is you begin to lose strength. You begin to lose your ability to hold on. And all of a sudden you begin to shake and it's harder and harder to focus on the target because of the tension that you are in. And I wonder if God is releasing some of us right now and saying, there is a vision I have for you. And you've been holding on for the perfect moment. You've been holding on till you have it all figured out, till you have it all together. And he's like, no. I'm releasing you into the world to teach what the one step you have learned to others, what two steps you have learned to others, and just guiding people along the way, following step after step after step. The question is, what are you aiming for? Now, before we kind of, I want to give you this acronym just to kind of close out our time. I want to take a moment and receive our offering because we're, we're going to have an opportunity to watch some of these stories, these incredible stories of what God has done in some people's lives. And we just get a glimpse of the kingdom of God coming to this world. And we get, get a glimpse of the stories of transformation. And when you give, I would just say this, these stories are what you're a part of. And when you give, when you're a part of this community, you're saying, this is my place. You're a part of the stories of transformation that are happening not only overseas, but right here in this world, in this community. You are a part of those stories. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you even for those of you during this unique time where we don't even get to be in the building together, but we still are a community encouraging one another that you are part of something so significant. You are so generous and, and we get to have an impact in this world with the barriers that we are facing. All right. So here, this idea, A, is for anchor. See, the acronym is around the word aim. What are you aiming for? What are you aiming at? A is for anchor. You know, when I think about anchors, the anchor points will remind us of where we're stuck. Like, where, where do we keep our foundation? I was uh, on a boat with a buddy of mine, and, and neither one of us are very good at uh, driving boats, let alone knowing what to do. And he borrowed a boat from his buddy. And so we're up in, in northern Michigan, and, and we're out with our families, and we decide to pull over to this one um, uh, this one island, right? And so we throw the anchor down from his buddy's boat. And we've never used this boat before, so we just figure that anchor can hold the boat. So we throw the anchor into the water, tie it up, and then we go on this hike around this island. And when we came back, that anchor started moving. 
and the boat wasn't where it was. The boat had been hit by the waves and started drifting out into the lake around the edge of the island, and we had to go searching for it. And I think about this anchor point. Today is an anchor point because when we anchor our lives into something significant, we're able to experience all the hope of, of that foundation. We're able to cling to that foundation even as the world is chaotic. Obviously, we didn't do a very good job of it, but today, when we look at the stories of baptism, it's an anchor point for you and for me to remind us of what God has not only done in, in people's lives, but what he has done in our life. What is he continuing to do in our life? When we, when we go into our small groups and we, we spend time, even in this season on Zoom, encouraging one another, and we have those kind of discussions in group life, we're, those are anchor points reminding us of where hope lies and how we can encourage one another. When we get the opportunity to come back into this building and we get to meet together and we're prayerfully uh, hoping that that will be sooner rather than later, like when that moment happens, it's that anchor point. But right now we're still doing that. We're still gathering. And those stories are anchor points for us to go. This is what the foundation is. And anchor points remind us that we cling to an unshakable kingdom in a shakable kind of world. We cling to an unshakable kingdom. One that holds our hearts, knits them together, offers significance and value. And when we are anchored, we are able to withstand the waves. We are able to withstand our doubts and the fears and trust and lean into what really matters. We're able to be released towards a vision. So where's my anchor? I is identity. When, we have, when we're anchored, our identity is an intentionally formed and strengthened. Strengthens not only our soul, whether we consider our hope in this world, right? No matter what, when our identity is being shaken, we come back to that anchor point and remind us of who speaks value into us. Even in Jesus' story, even in his baptism, before he ever accomplished anything, God spoke and said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. He said, like, before you accomplish anything, this is who you are. And God speaks his identity into us. So the question is, who is speaking your and my identity into us? Is it anchored in the unshakable kingdom? Or if we start to anchor ourselves in the shakable kind of world and let that world speak into our identity. And the last is mission. Mission. Anchored, identity, and mission. What are we aiming for? See, what happens, the, the scripture that we began today with is this scripture that we call the Great Commission. It's this invitation to be on mission together where Jesus says, I am sending you out into the world with purpose, intentionality to live your life like it's the last arrow and to save nothing, to save nothing, but believe that that mission, that vision of significance and, and, and impact is worth everything in our life. And the reason why we can be on mission together is because of what Jesus said. When he began that scripture, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And then he ended it with, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus is saying, we are on mission, not because you have it all together, but because you have me. Because you're anchored in me. And I offer to, to help you bring hope into this world. When we are anchoring our identity in Jesus, we are on mission with him to bring hope to a hurting world. To bring hope into the places where we need support. To bring hope of the unshakable kingdom. This is the invitation of God. And this is what he's saying. This is what I want you to aim for. Not to have it all figured out, but just to continue to choose that target in this world. When we celebrate stories, like we'll see in this baptisms and glimpses of the moment, we have that anchor point that reminds us that our identity is in Jesus. If we let him to speak his words of life into us, and that he offers that in our brokenness, in our mistakes, that we continue to point back to him and be on mission with him. I was uh, reminded as I was talking with Lily, who is 16, who got baptized last weekend. It was a very surreal moment for me because we were talking about her story and what God was doing in her hearts and why she chose to, to, to do this moment of baptism. And I was taken so quickly as she was sharing with so much joy in her life about what she believes God is going to do in her and through her. I was reminded that when I was 16 years old, April 16, 2001, I remember 
the moment when I was surrounded by friends, a mentor who had a vision for the kingdom of God and offered me a glimpse of it and a friend who did the same. And I remember as a 16 year old making that decision, not having my life together, not knowing a ton about the scriptures or the Bible and what Jesus asked, but knowing that I wanted to follow him wherever he led. And I'm looking at Lily and thinking, she is going to be a world changer because she is choosing to follow Jesus into the future of her life. When we lean into Jesus' voice, we get to bring hope because hope feels like home. It is the kingdom of God in our world, and we get a glimpse of that today.
summer I was diagnosed with breast cancer um, and the church rallied around us like we couldn't believe and you know the love that I have for Christ it just carried me through it was an amazing amazing experience and you know I just really wanted to show my faith today and show my love for Christ and, and outwardly and just it's been a miracle what's happened in our lives this year driving home from work and I just felt like the spirit of Jesus just entered into me. I just felt it. It took my breath away so much so that I pulled over on the side of 696 and just thanked the Lord and and just cried. And um, I knew then that I had been saved at that very, very moment. It was just an inspiration to me and um, that's, that's why I'm here. I kind of felt like I had been just going steady with God, and it was time to just really make that commitment so that, just like any other marriage that you would have, you don't take things for granted. You do it all in. You do it from the heart. You forgive. You accept. And it was just time to make that 100% all in. thing I really haven't surrendered was like that declaration, that public declaration that I wanted to say that I'm baptized, that I'm following Jesus for the rest of my life.
beautiful and powerful service we just got to witness. And and watching that right there brings me back so much to my own baptism. And Justin, I love what you said when you said that you don't have to have it all figured out beforehand. Mm -hmm. You know, I was 14 when I got baptized, and I definitely didn't have it all figured out back then. And still today, I definitely don't have it figured <laughs> out now. And it's just beautiful to, to know that you don't have to be in that spot yet. Uh, and such an encouraging when I look back on the anchor point and how God's been so faithful in releasing me on this journey of bringing the things of heaven down onto this earth. Though. So thank you for that message and that video that we got to see. Yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible to see those stories. Um, I'm overwhelmed. I, like, we were watching it uh, behind the camera, and I'm in tears just seeing the stories of life change, stories of faith. Um, they do so much for my soul, and I hope it's an encouragement to yours that that's why that anchor point is so powerful, because it reminds us about the God who loves us, who cherishes us, who desires so much for our life. And, and my hope is that today, and through this last Arrow series, that you would be encouraged that you would have a vision, that you want to step into that future, and that you would wrestle with some of those tensions in that moment of maybe you've been holding on to that arrow, and it's time to release it towards what truly matters, what, towards what God is calling you into. And so we're so thankful to be here with you and uh, that you've been with us in this journey. We hope you have an incredible weekend, and we will see you back next week for Football Sunday. Thank you. God bless. Thank you.